migraines and trigeminal neuralgia. So we have a comment here from Kyla saying that she has chronic migraines and trigeminal neuralgia. She's been to the neurologist. She's had an MRI, uh, but they haven't been as helpful as she would have hoped by this time. And now she's considering Botox. My main question for this kind of patient, because this is honestly the kind of person that I see every single day here in the practice. We actually have published studies about trigeminal neuralgia and our patients who are experiencing them here in the practice. My questions are always going to be, you know, what other tests have you had? You mentioned MRI. Has there been any other kinds of tests, whether it's x-rays, nerve scans, any other functional assessments? And then also going to be looking at what kind of things have you tried to improve it? You kind of mentioned about, I'm guessing it's probably been some, I'm going to assume some painkillers at some point, especially for something like trigeminal neuralgia. Maybe there's been some anti-inflammatories and you mentioned about Botox, but to be honest, I don't know if there's been anything else that you have tried over this time. And again, as an upper subtle chiropractor, one of the most common things I see every single day is every different type of headache or migraine and trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia, I've literally had, I think, three or four patients this morning who've been experiencing trigeminal neuralgia, and that's why they're coming in to see us. Because if there is something happening, potentially at that top part of the neck, these top two bones, and things are more out of place, we have nerves which are passing through here, and then they're passing out to different parts of the body. And if the ones that are passing through here, the ones just above it, they're what we call the cranial nerves. Those cranial nerves, if there is a misalignment like this, it will create this mechanical torsion in this area. That can start to pull locally on the nerves, the ones that are coming out and affect the ones above it. In the same way that, you know, say someone were to pull me by the shoulder, it doesn't just move that shoulder, everything else gets affected. The same thing will happen here. There can be this torsion because of, say, misalignments, whether it's due to postures, habits, lifestyles, accidents, injuries, stresses, fatigue, all these different things. And that can then start to affect those nerves in the area, irritate them. They don't work fun and function properly. They start to send the wrong kinds of messages like pain or symptoms. And it's very common someone can have just a very small change at the top but they have headaches, neck pain, migraines. Maybe they do have trigeminal neuralgia, maybe some dizziness, some nausea, even digestive issues, just because of what's located in this area. Of course, this area cannot affect everything. You know, if you have a knee pain because you are playing a sport, I'm not going to say we should be just adjusting the top part of the neck. But for these kind of neurological issues, it's very common that something may be happening up here and be a contributing factor, particularly if you've already been to see your medical doctors and they've already cleared things and they basically said they're not really sure in what way to go next. Botox, as I've discussed in another video, can be helpful, but generally it's more of a short-term change because as soon as the botulin starts to wear off, that's when the person needs to go back for it. And as some recent studies have been kind of showing, we're now seeing that the botulin, whether it's because of medical treatments like this or when people are doing it for aesthetic reasons, it starts to leach into the brain and can start to affect our mood and behavior in the long term. So, you know, if someone has it on a short-term basis, maybe they had a recent accident or injury and then one muscle has